I think of it as like there's a, you know, it's a it's a DeFi inflection point that is is coming and. Alrighty, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another CyperX video banger. In today's video breakdown, we are going to be discussing and talking about the growth of the DeFi ecosystem on Hedera and the XRPL. We are going to be listening into some industry leading experts from both Hedera and the XRPL talk about DeFi developments why both platforms are superior for the DeFi ecosystem. And hopefully this video breakdown shows you all why you should further your education on the DeFi ecosystem by joining a community like CyperX Wealth28 Club. Because hopefully by the end of this video breakdown, you all see that DeFi is one of those niches in crypto that is going to set the precipice for mass adoption and only continue to scale as this market matures. So if you all enjoy these video breakdowns, do us a favor, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe, sit back, relax, and enjoy some of these video clips and these fundamentals that we have to share with you all today, especially if you are HBAR and XRP holders. So I'm going to set the tone for today's video breakdown. And we're going to do this by sharing two video clips with you guys. I pay attention to key vocabulary and both of these individuals, this particular video breakdown from two months ago, pay attention to the dates and another video breakdown from only two weeks ago. They both mentioned that DeFi is at an inflection point. Take a second and listen. Uh, and here we are coming up, uh, setting new all-time highs. So this is a really exciting time in decentralized finance. Um, I'm personally um, very excited about what's to come. Uh, analysts say that in five years, uh, in six, five, six years, by 2030, uh, we'll get to $230 billion uh, in market value uh, in DeFi. The same story for users. Users went sideways for a little bit, but now we're getting uh, a comp a new inflection point in user growth, which suggests that we're unlocking uh, new s new audiences of users, uh, not just the ones that are coming in and coming out, but uh, that new people are paying attention to DeFi. Um, so hopefully, it means that we're solving some of those user experience uh, problems that uh, we discussed a little earlier. I think there's a lot of you know catalysts coming up in the fall with um, the U.S. elections. Uh, you know, Stani has been tweeting about a DeFi renaissance. So I'm curious what you guys are looking for in the next couple of months for the rest of the year in terms of the market and how is this cycle different from the others? So I think that um, what, what, I, what I think of when, you know, Stani is talking about DeFi renaissance, uh, I think of it as like there's a, you know, it's a, it's a DeFi inflection point that is, is coming and so I just wanted to play those two video clips back to back because, man, let me tell you what, we are going to see the TVL in the DeFi ecosystem massively increase over the next consecutive couple of years. And you do not want to be one of those market participants in three years from now asking, you know, what is DeFi? How do I get involved? Now is the time to get educated and get involved, which is why we created the Wealth28 Club, an A to Z course of over 100 video breakdowns that gives you access and teaches you everything about DeFi that you need to know, at least from our perspective, how we are sacrificing and implementing our capital, our own personal capital into the DeFi ecosystem to scale it, to grow it, to you know lend, to borrow, to earn yield. The course is oriented towards furthering your education. And now is the time to get involved in adopting an educational approach, a mature approach to DeFi while this market is still in its nascent and maturing stage. Okay. I cannot stress that enough. So head over to cyperxtraining.com. We would love to have you on the team. I've been trying to show you guys this stuff for a while now, pretty much since the beginning of this year when the AMM feature on the XRPL dropped back in March. I said to you guys back in July, and this is just going to prove the sentiment continues to unfold. I said this to you guys back in, sorry, excuse me, July uh, 15, 2024. I said last bull market, XRP, XLM. Now we're not going to cover XLM in today's video breakdown. Unfortunately, I just wanted to save some time. Um, and HBAR had no DeFi ecosystem helping boost momentum like ETH did. That is all changed now for the first 
time ever. And I'm going to show you that in today's video breakdown. You've seen nothing but DeFi developments on the XRPL, Stellar, and Hedera buckle up. And this next bull market cycle will be different, utility bull run or not. The DeFi ecosystem alone and on these three networks is about to explode in TVL over the next eight to 12 months, right? Now, moving on, keep in mind that that gentleman from two months ago at the, uh, let's just see what event this is, the Crypto Valley um, Summit 2024 that took place, um, Ripple just put this out. This is from October 9th, 2024. As of time of recording this video, it is the 22nd of October. Australia proposes unique approach to digital asset regulation. Now, one little tiny snippet that I noticed about this, keep in mind that that gentleman said that they're projecting 200 billion by 2030. Well, look at this. Okay, Ripple put this out. As a result, decentralized finance is projected to reach 601 billion by 2032. If you head over to DeFi Llama and you do your homework right now, you look at the TVL locked in the DeFi ecosystem. I'm not going to show you that in today's video breakdown because I've shared it in previous video breakdowns, but it is nowhere near this number which presents such a massive opportunity. If you go look at the TVL locked on the XRPL right now, it's hovering on DeFi Llama at about 14 million. On Hedera, I believe it's sitting at about 43 some odd million dollars, okay? That is nothing. That is nothing. That is absolute peanuts, people. And you have to realize and wake up to what is going on. So let me show you guys some of those ongoing developments. Now, I shared this video breakdown two months ago when it came out. I was one of the first six people to watch this video. And now moving forward, two months later, you guys and gals, look at this. This is insane. I'm going to show you guys physical proof that nobody's paying attention to DeFi, which is yet again, another reason why you should take advantage of the opportunity in the now and get ahead of the retail crowd that has no idea that this is even ongoing. This video now has 100 views two months later after showing it to you guys publicly on YouTube and playing a video clip. This is the CTO at Peer Assist Technology. Take a second and listen to what he talks about the developments of the EVM side chain in the XRPL. I'm just going to play about a minute and a half long of this video. I'm going to speed it up to 1.25 speed so you guys can um, get through this. Take a second here and listen to what he has to say. I'm Adria Carrera. I'm the CTO of Pierce's Technology, which is a dev shop based in Barcelona and now in Andorra. And we basically did blockchain projects since the 2019. And we've been working with XRP Ledger pretty recently with uh, very cool projects such as the EBM sidechain and some central banks uh, institutional work. So we've been working uh, on the EVM sidechain for almost two years now. And there are many reasons why do we need the EVM sidechain. Uh, I would say the first one is because we are opening the programmability doors on the XRP Ledger. XRP Ledger has not been able to be programmed. You cannot deploy smart contracts on the XRP Ledger uh, in, in his entire lifespan. And now we are opening the doors for that to be possible. So with the, with the EVM sidechain, we are enabling the ability for anyone who's holding XRP to move the XRP on the EVM sidechain without putting cell pressure on the XRP and start interacting with the EVM ecosystem. EVM ecosystem, it's huge. It's become the standard. And nowadays, all the cryptocurrencies and all the blockchains in the crypto space are building in EVM. So there's incredible opportunities uh, for everyone who's building on the EVM right now. Right, so we'll go ahead and we'll pause right there. The reason why I'm showing you that is because yet again, we're just showing you guys the consistent developments happening behind the scenes. This is Jazzy Cooper, head of DeFi developments. Now this is from seven months ago and listen to her talk about the same exact thing. And there may be a solution in terms of building on XRPL mainnet. Um, we have also been uh, working in partnership uh, with a company called Pierce on building out an EVM compatible XRPL sidechain. Uh, so that's fully EVM compatible and would allow developers to tap into a lot of the benefits of XRPL in terms of its durability, longevity, uh, regulatory clarity on, on the token. Um, so remain in the XRPL ecosystem, but still build with familiar rails uh, that our EVM sidechain um, provides. So looking to spread the word on, on both of those areas. So I'll go ahead and pause it right there. Now, fast forward to today, keeping in mind that we told you guys months ago, the DeFi ecosystems on these three platforms, particularly in this focus today is XRPL and Hedera are only going to continue to scale over the next eight to 12 months. I've now shown you guys historical information, showing you guys over the past couple of months and showing you all that we've been putting our money where our mouth is at here at CyberX. Ripple's now putting out fundamental pieces projecting $601 billion of TVL locked in decentralized finance by 2032. I know that that seems such a long way away for impatient individuals, but it's really not if you have a five-year plan, which most entrepreneurs and real mature investors do. 
Um, but now let's fast forward to today. What can we see? It was just announced yesterday. This is from October 21st. Peer Assist technology. Hmm, what did we just listen to? We listened to the CTO at Peer Assist and the individual representative of DeFi developments at Ripple mentioned Peer Assist and the EVM sidechain. Well, look at this. We're excited to announce the launch of the XRP Ledger Snap for MetaMask today. 30 million monthly active users of MetaMask are now just one click away from having an account of the XRP ledger, creating a unique opportunity for the adoption and management of XRPL. This is absolutely massive. This is only going to continue to further the demand for XRP and give it the ability to be accessible by many more crypto users that prior to this happening didn't have access to it. Right. So, I mean, like I said, we're going to continue to scale. We're going to continue to see developments. And this is why you should get involved in DeFi, because the ecosystem is only going to continue to grow. Now, before we transition over to um, Hedera and some of the developments and some of the commentary from some panelists on the Hedera growth of the DeFi ecosystem, let's just head back to Jazzy Cooper real fast. And let's just listen to her talk about why the XRPL is built for DeFi. Take a second real fast and listen. And this is for all you XRP enthusiasts or holders that have no idea what DeFi is, keeping in mind that the XRPL and XRP in the ecosystem has never had access to this before outside of this year. This is all brand new. This is all fresh. This is happening for the first time ever. We've been attempting to enlighten people on this new environment where ETH holders have had access to DeFi for years now. This is all happening for the first time ever. So yes, it's a little bit sketchy. Yes, it seems a little bit skeptical, but you can start to earn yield on your digital asset XRP. We're hoping that'll go live by the end of the quarter. Um, we have a couple of great partnerships in place um, to bring that to, to end users, um, some programs in place to, to help spread awareness. And, and yeah, we're definitely excited about, about the AMM launch. Why do you think the XRP ledger is really, you know, almost made for DeFi in a way? Because I think the, the throughput and different things make it a really good candidate for that. I don't know if you want to kind of speak on some of the, you know, principles of the ledger that allow that to be successful. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So um, the XRP ledger is not Turing, Turing complete, right? It's not intended to be able to build whatever application that a developer can think of. And that's the reason why we are looking into adding an EVM sidechain. But what it is built for, purpose built, you know, from the ground up is payments and value transfer. So it is incredibly fast, incredibly cheap uh, for anything payments and, and um, value transfer. As I mentioned, it has the native order book decks, um, which has a lot of uh, sort of neat capabilities built right into it um, in terms of price optimization. And all of this happens uh, for a fraction of a penny. Um, so that's really our, our vision and our hope as we start to partner up with different interoperability players um, to really make the XRP ledger a hub for value transfer so that it doesn't matter if you're transacting on Polygon trying to buy an NFT or you're you're doing some advanced you know DeFi strategy on, on Ethereum. At the end of the day, if you want to swap token A for token B using the right cross-chain infrastructure, that'll execute on XRPL mainnet and land back in your wallet without you ever leaving the chain that you're on and executing at the fastest um, speed and lowest price uh, anywhere in, in blockchain. So that's the vision we're really excited about. Right. So they're just pretty much going over and talking about why the XRPL is built for DeFi. You heard him say that built for DeFi. OK, so, you know, XRP enthusiasts that are denying the capabilities of the XRPL, they don't even understand, you know, the digital asset and what they hold and the real capability. How many people do you see out there on Twitter spaces and on YouTube saying, know what you hold, know what you hold, right? But they don't even know that this capability exists because they're not doing enough research. And what are they doing? They're just buying and hodling. And I get that strategy, but that strategy, it's outdated. Now is the time to get our crypto working for us. We owe that to ourselves as holders of these digital assets for years now with no price appreciation to earn more money on the digital assets that we already hold. At least that's the perspective that I have. And I know that a lot of people here in this community, in crypto in general, what are you here for? You're here to make money. So, you know, at the end of the day, teach his own. So moving on, let's just start to go over the developments in the Hedera ecosystem. Um, you know, just keeping in mind the post that I made to you guys back in July that we're only going to continue to see growth in DeFi and scaled adoption over the next eight to 12 months, Hedera, XLM, or Stellar and the XRPL. Well, we can see this announcement. This is back from August 13th, 2024. What happened? The HBAR Foundation partnered with Copper, but what did they do this for, right? You can see here, we're excited to announce that Copper, an award-winning leader in digital asset custody, collateral management, and prime service has integrated with Hedera Network to enable what? Institutional access to DeFi and custody of HBAR, right? So keep that in mind. I've tried to show you guys in previous video breakdowns that 
Financial institutions are 110% paying attention to DeFi, especially as we head into a low interest rate environment, the search for higher yield will continuously scale. Now, it's not going to happen overnight. This is not a get rich quick scheme schematic. We're going to see lower interest rates ushered in over the next consecutive couple of months slash years. But once that happens, DeFi is going to be a niche that scales massively. So with that in mind, Let's head over here and let's listen to some reputable individuals from the HBAL Foundation and Saucer Swap Labs discuss and talk about Hedera for DeFi and, you know, what's going on with the TVL on Hedera and some um, interesting developments that are happening right now in Saucer Swap. So just take a second right here and we're going to listen to about three video clips and then I'll end it there for you guys. If you've enjoyed this video breakdown so far, smash that thumbs up button and subscribe. We do appreciate the love and the support. It does help boost the algorithm and push these videos out to more like-minded individuals like yourselves. And if you guys are interested in taking your education a step further, literally hundreds of video breakdowns on DeFi, instead of searching the web and doing research and going through untrustworthy information and resources on YouTube and Twitter, head over to cyberxtrading.com. Come join the Wealth 28 Club. You can take the course. You can go and digest the material and get a firm understanding of DeFi and where we're at in the current ecosystem, how to deploy your digital assets if you choose to do so. And if not, at least you have a firm foundation for when you choose to do so after maybe the next bull market cycle so you can keep, maintain, and grow your wealth. Let's jump into these couple of video clips here. I'm going to play them all back to back, and then I'll um, leave you guys with some commentary, and then we will end the video here. DeFi on Hedera. So, Greg, um, could you start by giving us an overview of the DeFi ecosystem on Hedera? What makes Hedera an ideal platform for DeFi projects in your mind? Well, uh, thanks for having me to begin. And, and DeFi is really fun. It's fascinating. It has both individual and institutional interests. And I'm really excited to be here with Joseph with his tax experience. Um, I know later on we'll, we'll touch on some of the institutional side where products and some of the world's largest asset managers are, are being tokenized. But I think really it's helpful to start with the question of understanding why. You know, why Hedera? Why DeFi? Uh, as I'm sure your users and viewers will recall, Hedera, powered by its cryptocurrency HBAR, has been independently verified as the most used uh, open source public network in terms of total transaction count. So it's about 20x that of Ethereum. It's the fastest in terms of realized peak and average transactions per second at a low cost, which is really important for DeFi apps uh, in that, you know, especially those that require high throughput and low fees. It's also quite developer friendly uh, with programmability in a variety of different languages from Java, JavaScript, C++, and Solidity. So, you should... so I want to keep playing that, but we're already going on, you know, 18 minutes in this video, but he just continues to talk about why the Hedera ecosystem is, you know, sound and operational for the scaling of DeFi. But what I want you to particularly pay attention to is he mentioned individual use and institutional DeFi use, right? Keep that in mind, because once these institutions get the regulatory green light, the floodgates are going to freaking open and we are going to see a massive amount of TVL come onto these chains. And again, that's going to happen over the next consecutive months last year. It is not a get rich quick. I'm not sitting here projecting bullish moon boy. Oh, to H bar is going to go to frickle $5 tomorrow. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> get that out of your mind. This is a long-term strategy. How do you grow your wealth in the now? How do you maintain your wealth after the next bull market cycle? It's coming. Don't get me wrong, but we have to stay focused. We have to keep in mind that this is not something that is just going to make us rich overnight. Okay. Keep, uh, while we're on the topic of TVL, all right, take a second here and listen to what he has to say about TVL increasing over the next consecutive couple of months on Hedera. So it's, it's clear that, you know, these projects were, were just at the beginning. Um, as more developers and users discover the power of Hedera for DeFi, um, I expect to see even more groundbreaking projects and TVL. So it's really quite an exciting moment. Really quite an exciting moment. And he expects TVL to consistently increase over time as more users adopt this technology. Um, last but not least, okay, I have one last video clip for the individuals that are always like, they always have this like fear in the back of their mind for some odd reason. However, fear hinders you know, progress, just keep that in mind. But there's those people that I see in the comments that are like, well, what about a permanent loss? La, 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 all this stuff, right? Okay, I get that. Risk mitigation is key, which is something that we cover in the CyperX Wealth 28 Club, but stop being so fearful. The DeFi ecosystem is going to continue to mature. Listen to what this individual rep from Saucer Swap Labs talks about providing one side of liquidity instead of two side of liquidity and liquidity pools and mitigates impermanent loss, allows you to continue to hold digital assets that you hold 
now by providing one side of liquidity, earn yield on those digital assets and still benefit from the price appreciation of those digital assets, right? Keep that in mind because these are all developments that a lot of people don't know about. For example, this is uploaded five months ago, people. Oh my gosh, this is so mind blowing. It has 94 views. 94 freaking views, people. Nobody knows that this is happening in the, the retail space. Okay. Take a second here and listen. Interesting. And and so back back to you, Joseph, on Salsa Swap and, and the V2. Uh, so you mentioned all the improvements that came with V2. One uh, feature that, that was introduced uh, for V2 pool is auto pools. Um, how has that feature improved user experience and liquidity management on, on your platform? Yeah, so um, auto pools are the latest major addition to Saucer Swap, and they're based on uh, the Ichi Active Liquidity Management um, or ALM protocol. So they enable users to deposit a single asset into a vault, uh, which sits atop a Saucer Swap version two pool. An algorithm will then take this user deposit and allocate it across a range of prices within that, that pool, um, and periodically rebalance the funds um, to continue earning fees at the current price of the pool um, as it as it changes. So Uniswap version three uh, showed us that managing concentrated liquidity positions is notoriously difficult and time consuming. Auto pools um, have undoubtedly improved the UX of Saucer Swap by allowing users to participate in V2 without the continuous effort of manually rebalancing their positions. Um, there are drawbacks, of course. So auto pools may not capitalize on fees and rewards to the same extent as a diligent liquidity provider. But even so, um, they enable any user to maintain exposure to and earn the majority of their fees in their chosen deposit token, uh, while also benefiting from its potential price appreci appreciation. And it also follows that um, the risk of impermanent loss is reduced, uh, while also benefiting from its potential price appreci appreciation. And it also follows that um, the risk of impermanent loss is reduced. Boom. So I'll just leave it there. I'll let him say the word. Risk of impermanent loss is reduced, and you still benefit from price appreciation of the single digital asset that you implement into the pool. I'll leave you guys there with that yet again slaying the information for you all, bringing you guys the realest info. All the video clips that I share with you guys today combined have less than like a thousand views, people. I don't know how individuals don't see that this is such gemmed information that not a lot of manual retail traders and investors on YouTube and Twitter are talking about. Here at CyberX, we're always trying to fixate our attention on stuff that doesn't really meet, reach the mainstream. We don't give bullish Moonboy Hopium price predictions, and I really hope that you guys respect that here. We try to deliver you all real, valuable research that is going to benefit individuals in the long run, as we are early adopters and pioneers in this space. With that being said, we would love to have you on the team. If any of this information seems appetizing to you and that you want to further your education on DeFi, head over to cyberxtrading.com. We'd love to have you on the team. Myself and some of the other mentors are awaiting your arrival. With that being said, none of this is financial advice. I'm not telling you guys to go out there and invest in DeFi, buy these digital assets or anything of that nature. Assess your own risk properly. I have assessed mine and I'm willing to lose 100% of the capital that I have invested, not only in DeFi, but also in this crypto market. And I suggest you stomach the appetite to do the same. With that being said, many blessings to you guys. Again, if you're not subscribed, make sure that you do so now. Smash that thumbs up button before you head off and I will see you all in the next video breakdown.